Well, hey everyone, uh, this video is mainly for uh, our Spirit Life people, our church group, uh, anyone else who wants to listen to it, who cares to listen. Uh, here we are again, I've been trying to avoid doing um, this kind of thing. Uh, I'm much happier just talking face to face with people. Um, but here we are again in uh, lockdown. So uh, needing to communicate with uh, people through online meetings. So this is just going to be a bit of uh, you know, talk, I just felt to talk a bit about uh, the book of Zephaniah and particularly about idolatry. Um, so we'll just have a bit of a, a chat about it and some thoughts on it and uh, see where see where we get to. Uh, but I was ju I've just been really struck by the book of Zephaniah just lately and. Uh, each time I go back to it, I just see more in there, and and I'm just struck with what Zephaniah was saying. Um, and you know, idolatry. One thing about idolatry is that all through the Bible, God, uh, if you if you're a reader of the Bible in its entirety, and you're not just trying to focus on one thing or another. You realize in an overall general sense that God talks so much about idolatry. Um, and he has a really specific dislike for idolatry. And all through the Old Testament, but in the New Testament too. You know, one of the examples in the New Testament is uh, in the book of Acts is, is um, Herod, who the people start... Uh, treating him like a god and um, and God strikes him down and, and he dies uh, dies a horrible death um, so you know all through the Bible God is it seems to be one of the things that you know it's funny we talk about other sins sometimes we get hung up on particular sins but uh, it seems that idolatry is, is right up there in God's um, thoughts in relation to his people uh, idolatry is really you know it's spiritual adultery it's it's uh, unfaithfulness to to god it's a disloyalty to god it's it's worshiping other gods instead of him anyway it says in verse one of the book of zephaniah that he was prophesying in the time of Josiah. Now, if you go back and read about Josiah, it's a astounding story because they found uh, the scriptures and and they read them, them to him, and then he realized that he was actually prophesied about in earlier scriptures, and and uh, and he fulfilled uh, the things that were said about him. And he uh, anyway. Let's try and be not so long winded, but in the time of Josiah, there was actually a revival. And so Zephaniah's book is about the idolatry of the people and he's condemning that and about God's reaction to that. And it's about what God says he will do. And some of it's very uh, uh, drastic and severe and, and terrifying and some of it's very uh, redemptive and beautiful. Um even the severe things to me have a beauty about them because it's God bringing his justice. And, you know, we go on and on in modern society about justice. Everyone wants justice, uh, but no one wants judgment. And uh, think about this. There's no justice without judgment. For there to be justice, somebody has to make a judgment. Uh, and the only one who's going to make a completely holy and righteous judgment is God. And he's the only one that's really going to bring true, true justice and righteousness to this earth ultimately. So if you long for 
righteousness, for things to be made right. If you long for justice in this earth, then the one to look to is Jesus. So uh, anyway, he's prophesying in a time of revival. And so really, I realized that, yeah, sure, his words to some extent must apply during the time he was prophesying. In, but when you read the words, there's such strong words of calling the people to repentance from idolatry and stru such strong words um, rebuking them about idolatry and things. And then that, but also um, he's talking about something that, Peter the Apostle actually talked about that Peter would have gotten from when he spent time, you know, Peter spent three years with Jesus and he's talking about uh, that and uh, if we, you know, you'll see when we get into this. So it seems to me that Zephaniah is prophesying way further ahead than just his immediate context. Yes, sure, he's speaking uh, to the nation at that time in that place but he seems to be speaking way further ahead even further ahead than where we're at right now um, but I suspect not too far away from where we're at right now so in verse 2 it says God says I will utterly consume everything from the face of the land says the Lord now as he goes through the book the book is just um Three chapters as he goes through the book uh, he says that he will consume everything by fire now if you know your Bible and especially if you know your New Testament you know that Peter tells us that the heavens and the earth are reserved for to be leveled by fire and you know God said that he would he would never again flood the whole earth by flooding and we have the rainbow as a symbol of that covenant but uh, Peter told us that in the New Testament that the earth would be completely stripped bare by uh, fire and Zephaniah really uh, as far as I can tell seems to be talking very directly, directly about that the exact same thing that Peter was um, talking about the verse 3, I will consume man and beast. I will consume the birds of the heavens, the fish of the sea, and the stumbling blocks. Now, the margin here says that uh, the word is idols. Along with the wicked, I will cut off man from the face of the land, says the Lord. So he says he will consume, you know, every living thing. Uh, and he says he'll consume the idols along with the wicked now notice that he places the word idols and wicked together now just take note of that because one of the things we need to learn from that is that idols um, are objects that wickedness is focused on and so i would uh, suggest to you that for instance um pornography would be an example of that so it's a it's an object or something that people behold they look at um, that wickedness is focused on so he says the idols uh, will be um, consumed along with the wicked so that's it's it's idols or objects that wickedness is becomes focused on uh, then verse 4 I will stretch out my hand against Judah, against all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. I will cut off every trace of Baal from this place. See, Baal is an idol. He is one of the, you know, main idols of that day. The names of the idolatrous priests with the pagan priests, those who worship the host of heaven on the housetops, those who worship and swear oaths by the Lord, but also swear by Milcom, who apparently is, is Molech, who's the god of child sacrifice, the same ruling demonic spirit that rules over abortion. Um, he talks about those who, who worship these pagan gods, who also worship uh, and swear oaths by the Lord. That's called syncretism. It's people who try and worship the true God, and idols and pagan gods at the same time and we still have 
lots of that today. There are lots of Christians who do that, who say, I'm a Christian, I love Jesus, I believe in Jesus. They, they worship God, maybe they go to church, worship God, uh, but they're also worshipping and bowing down to uh, pagan gods. Christians who, who do um, yoga are doing exactly that. Y yoga is just a, um, it's, 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 uh, if you study Hinduism, one of the entry points to Hinduism is yoga. So, you know, you're, you, you're saying, I'm a Christian, um, but you're practicing something that's one of the entry points to Hinduism. Now, no offense to my Hindu friends, but Jesus is the way the truth and the life and if you're a christian you you can't you can't worship both uh, then verse six those who have turned back from following the lord and have not sought the lord nor inquired of him so three things here follow seek inquire follow the, those who have not those who are not following the lord they're not seeking the lord they're not inquiring of the Lord. So I ask you right now, let the Holy Spirit come and search your heart. Are you really following Jesus right now in your life? Are you seeking Jesus right now in your life? Are you actively inquiring from God, from day to day and asking the Lord about Lord about my life about what do I do next what are you saying to me right now what's going on what uh, you know actively seeking God so that you can walk with him and hear from him remember God in the garden of Eden and they sinned and God comes and says where are you where are you? And, you know, is God saying that to you right now? He's saying, where are you? I'm wanting to walk in the garden with you, walk and talk and fellowship with you. I want a rich relationship with you. Where are you? So we'll just go a little bit more here. I can see just looking at my timer clicking over that I don't know if we should, how much we should try and do. Uh, in one sitting uh, but we'll just do a little bit more uh, and then see where we're at here's another verse verse 7 be silent in the presence of the Lord God for the day of the Lord is at hand for the Lord has prepared a sacrifice he has invited his guests he says be silent in the presence of the Lord for the day of the Lord is at hand the closer we come to what the bible calls the day of the lord the day of reckoning the closer we come to that you know the bible here is suggesting to his people silence <laughs> and god said in james he said uh, be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to get angry what do some of us do when we get on for instance on social media we're quick to speak and quick to get angry we're doing exactly the opposite of what god said and we're not very good at listening because usually we're very convinced of our own opinion and our own opinion is usually just made up of whatever we've been <laughs> imbibing uh, through our eye and ear gates, you know, over the last, you know, hours and weeks and months and so on. Uh, so, you know, your own opinions, you can't even necessarily always trust your own opinion. The one thing you can trust is God's word. And, uh, so, you know, we need to be imbibing God's word. My wife was just talking about this to me today when we we're on our walk and saying people need to read the Bible. And she was saying to me, you know, not just the New Testament, 
uh, but the Old Testament. You know, we have people trying to discount uh, the Old Testament. Well, that's that's not wise. God gave us the whole Bible in its entirety, and we live in a new covenant. But that new covenant is actually, uh, you know, the the apostles when they preached the new covenant were preaching it from the Old Testament scrolls the old testament scriptures so uh it's not a good idea to discount the new testament but even many christians if they just even read their new testament uh would be such an eye-opener for them they'd start to realize how much teaching is false and how much and what's really real and legit because there's a lot of teaching around that doesn't even have a lot of scripture in it you know, whereas in the early New Testament times, they devoted themselves to the public reading of Scripture, amongst other things, amongst prayer and so on. And the apostles, you know, preached by revelation from the Old Testament uh, Scriptures. And so, you know, they weren't, they weren't giving TED Talks. Uh, so I'm being a little bit naughty there, but just allow me a bit of, um, uh, a bit of liberty. Uh, so that's uh, something to begin with from Zephaniah and um, uh, I guess I'll just introduce um, one more thing, concept here. I just want to introduce a concept before we finish from Zephaniah and then we'll see where we get to, whether we come back to this or what. There's, there's a lot more in here, but in verse um, 18, and this is mentioned more than once in uh, Zephaniah. In fact, it's sort of an. It's a, to me, as I read it, I see. I see it as a kind of a major theme of Zephaniah. Now, you know how I talked about that. What he's prophesying about lines up with what Peter says. Well, uh, about the heavens and the earth being stripped bare by fear, by fire, <laughs> not fear. Sorry, by fire. Um, in verse eighteen, it says, "Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them." in the day of the Lord's wrath. There's lots of people actually that right now there's a big buzz around silver and gold. A lot of people talking about buying silver and gold as a uh, as a way to um, try and guard against inflation. Some people are worried about if you have money stored away that inflation is going to erode the value of your money. And so there's a lot of talk about guarding against inflation by having silver and gold. Well, you can work that out for yourself What you, if you're into, if you've got any money to buy silver and gold, that's up to you. But it says that silver and gold won't be able to deliver people in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy i just before we finish i just want to get you to get this phrase the fire of his jealousy for he will make speedy riddance of all those who dwell in the land whoa but it talks about this is talking about judgment and isaiah 26 9 says you know when the judgments uh, when God's judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants learn righteousness. And right now, God's judgments are in the earth. You can go away if you if you don't if you can't handle that stuff. You can go away and debate on that or whatever. I'm not into debating that. Um, it's obvious to me that um, that judgment that God actually still judges uh, people in these times is obvious to me from the. Uh, scriptures, but if, if you don't go along with that, I've, I, there's one uh, kind of well-known prophetic person that said recently, there's no judgment between the cross and the final judgment. Well, scripturally, that's um, incorrect, but you know, some people believe that, and that's okay. If you believe that, you, you, I'm, I'm not going to, I don't want to get into a big debate with you. You believe what you want, but I believe that the judgments of God are currently in the earth. And uh, but it says that the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. This is this fire that Peter's talking about in the New Testament that will level the earth. It'll strip the earth bare. It'll be a complete consuming of everything. And uh, but listen to what how he describes this fire: the fire of his jealousy. God is so jealous for his people, for his people's attention, for his people's worship. And, and God entirely 
disapproves of us giving worship to anything or anyone else. You know, uh, I was a bit um, disturbed. You know, Paul said there was a city that Paul was in. It might have been Athens, uh, where it says his spirit was provoked within him because of all the idols there. It was in the book of Acts. And, you know, we have the Holy Spirit in us, dwelling in us. So I think sometimes when we see idolatry, our, 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 you know, quite uh, obvious idolatry, it can disturb us in our spirit. We become provoked in our uh, spirit. And I think it's something of this. It's the fire of his jealousy. And, you know, something that disturbed me was I read uh, two or three days ago a musical, uh, some musicians that, Jacinda Ardern likes called Shapeshifter and um, she promotes them and they promote her and they said about her they said uh, the world's great leader worthy of the world's praise and then recently Willie Jackson one of um, the Labour government's um, MPs one of their ministers uh, said that Jacinda Ardern is the saviour of our nation. This is very biblical language. You know, those musicians saying that Jacinda Ardern is worthy of all the world's praise, that's biblical language, man. They're psalmists. They're not psalmists for God, but they're psalmists. And, and if you look in the Psalms, that phrase, worthy of praise, that's always to be attributed to the true God. Never to a person and so that's idolatry of a person now it doesn't just happen in the world uh, it also happens uh, in the church we idolize um, Christian leaders and this will always be a fail it will always fail because human beings um, fail us uh, and God doesn't um, so I just want to leave you with that. Uh, I've got family invasion now. Our grandchildren live on the same site with us here. And uh, so f lockdown gets pretty full on with grandchildren every day. Uh, and I just try and get snippets of time like this sometimes where I can do something like this. And it looks like my time's up. But um, the fire of his jealousy. You know, God's jealousy is expressed as fire, the fire of his jealousy. God is jealous for your attention, jealous for your worship. He's jealous for you, for you to be in close relationship with him, for you to have your eyes and attention and dependence on him, for you to be so dependent on him, looking to him, looking unto Jesus. We'll talk about that another time, looking at him, because that's another thing that's on my heart, uh, especially in relation to um, the situation we're in right now. But I wanted to talk tonight a bit about, or well, you might be watching it during the day, but whenever, but I wanted to talk uh, especially a bit about idolatry and the fire of God's jealousy and that this will be ultimately expressed in the whole earth being laid bare so god's going to renew the whole uh, planet there will be a new heavens and a new earth the bible says um, so i think zephaniah was prophesying a long way beyond just the time of josiah when they were actually having a revival and and his words are pertinent um, for right now so put your attention on god repent of any kind of idolatry in life ask the holy spirit say holy spirit lord come search my heart for idolatry is there any man woman thing that i've got my attention on more than you am i trying to worship two gods am i trying to worship you and some other personal thing Am I worshipping my family? Is my family more important than you, Lord? Ask the Holy Spirit to, to search your heart. And, you know, spirit-like people, 
you know, I really love you. And here we are again in this, uh, in one of these times. You know, we're not doing Zoom uh, at the moment because we found out after lockdown that some people found it quite painful. And I have to say that I do to some extent as well. And so at the moment, uh, I'm not trying to even attempt to to uh, to do it because that I, I you know some people just really found it a painful experience. There was a few people that liked it, um, but there was, there was other feedback that came back to me after the lockdown that indicated to me that uh, it's not necessarily the greatest um, vehicle for us. It might work for for others fine, but. Uh, um, at the moment we're not we're not doing it um, so yes yeah, spirit like people love you much and uh, and anyone else listening uh, to you know I, I really pray that your heart will really you know that you can get your heart aligned with God's heart you know that you can that you can be like John at the Last Supper you know and lean back on the heart and, and on the heart of God and listen to the heart of God um, and like even he says here maybe be silent sometimes uh, be silent in the presence of the Lord God silence is a good thing uh, to be slow to speak uh, quick to listen and slow to get angry okay bless you all very much